Lack of time is the most common barrier to evidence-based physiotherapy. In this second video, physiotherapists share some strategies they use to tackle the barrier of lack of time. I think it's important to stay curious and committed. And it's important to develop that habit of inquiry. What can help is to find like-minded colleagues who can spur you on and nudge you towards uh, a better clinician and keep asking questions and bouncing ideas off each other. I think you have to be uh, really proactive in your approach and not wait until you have free time to do things. Uh, I think taking 30 minutes a day to go through Pedro or any other database is within reach for the majority of us. Set the time at which you do it in advance with a cup of tea or cup of coffee <laughs> and in the absence of external stimulation uh, to really spend 30 minutes fully concentrated. The earlier this habit is taken in the professional career, the more it's maintained. I think new graduate physiotherapists are fortunate to be up to date in scientific in literature search methods. Uh, disability may, must be maintained I think, moreover, that having physiotherapy students in the department is an opportunity because by asking them for research, it also forces us to keep up to date. It's mutual learning. Well, starting from a clinical practice or following a particular interest, I suggest to perform a literature search and read at least one full text article on a regular basis, for example, monthly. I recommend to rely on the most authoritative, authoritative uh, journals. And I believe that reviews are a good starting point. If the selected uh, paper is a clinical trial, search the paper database for, in for information on methodological quality. Doing the procedure regularly over time will make it easier and less time demanding um, and also will increase confidence. Get involved. Join the professional association, whether it's your local, regional, national, international, because they're all connected. So if you join your local, you'll also be able to access your national and international colleagues. And, you know, these professional associations, like here in BC, my role is supported as a knowledge broker. And we also have a librarian who will help do those searches with you. If you belong to your organization, you'll get supports, you'll meet other people, you'll get opportunities to be involved. You'll be with other people who are really engaged. And those people can help point out things that will be helpful for you. I think, um... Firstly, it is inertly prioritizing the importance of evidence-based practice. If you understand the importance, I guess, um, naturally you want to make time for it mm -hmm. in order to ensure that the treatments that you give are effective and efficient and they really do benefit the best for the patient. In terms of how I manage, I think I'm fortunate to be in the residency program because it does give me a lot of opportunity for coaching time with my seniors. So I would say optimizing these times uh, really do help. At the same time, I think the residency again provides opportunity for, for me to, to initiate journal clubs and clinical related um, case study discussions. So these are all excellent opportunities for us to, to have a think and have a discussion um, in an open environment. In the residency program, there is also a, an aspect called live patient examinations. So that's where um, the senior physios do come in to see the patient with me. And then we, we have to go through a discussion after. So I think um, these opportunities also do um, encourage uh, a lot of open discussion, a lot of challenging uh, norms and you know, a lot of having to know about your evidence. I think the other thing is around trust and autonomy. One of the things that I see in systems is there's so much you have to do that the culture around how you look at time is very important. 
what you prioritise, how you support teams or staff without an autonomy or a trust around wanting to do better for patients and embedding evidence-based practice. If you don't have that in your culture, it makes it very difficult and you, your time can get sucked up with the hierarchy and the systems and the processes of a big business and micromanagement and approvals and things that add less value. New graduates are really important. In terms of time, they're always going to feel pressure. The learning curve for how you start a career is very steep. So just focus on that journey. Look at it in terms of your outcomes. Stay curious and ask lots of questions. Don't be afraid to learn from mistakes. The, the key thing, I suppose, if I was to pick one thing, try not to focus on the shortage of the time you've got. Think of it a little differently. Use the time that you do have to make a difference. Partly it's about the team ethos. So making a commitment that we are going to really try hard to start implementing evidence-based practice and then having some strategies to do that. So that might be a journal club or it might be a paper of the week that we encourage everybody to read and everybody to talk about. But it's also having role models and seeing other people perhaps do clinical audits or service evaluation or small research projects that are then presented at conferences so that you can see the benefits of engaging with research and then coming full circle to how then you then implement that in clinical practice. I think it starts with a team decision that we are going to be the change makers who are going to implement uh, evidence-based practice and then working back from that to think, well, how are we actually going to go about doing that? We hope you can try some of these strategies to tackle the barrier of time in your workplace. The campaign is supported by World Physiotherapy and physiotherapy organisations in Australia, Italy, France and the Netherlands.